Last year, when Zip launched their new 303 Firecrest wheels, they made the headlines for a number of reasons. One of them is that they weigh just 1,352 grams, which is seriously light. Now though, Zip have released a brand new wheel set in their top of the range NSW line. These are the 353, and they are a bonkers 1,255 grams for the pair. But these are no flimsy featherweights. As you'll see, they're seriously breaking new ground. So what's going on here? Super light wheels and nothing new, and you could get even lighter than these, but there are some key differences here. Firstly, these are not tubular wheels where you need to glue your tires on. These are for tubeless tires, and they're also disc brake, and they're also wide, 25 millimeters internally. And as you can see, they're also aero wheels, and they have a lifetime warranty that even covers them for gravel riding. So whether you ride tarmac or dirt, all riders can take confidence in the fact that these are gonna be durable wheels. Now I'm gonna tell you more, of course, in this video, but I'm also gonna try and take advantage of that crazy light weight and all round versatility by seeing if I can't sneak a cheeky KOM up a particularly steep and particularly poorly surfaced road. I focused initially on lightweight because well, these are bonkersly light and everyone loves lightweight kit on their bikes, but there is much more to them than that. Now Zip's mission statement, if you will, their tagline is making you faster. And for a long time, they've been wedded to wind tunnels and the data they got from it, but gradually they've started to change their focus to a more holistic view of speed gained from wheels. Now in part, that's due to new and now finally reliable tech that allows them to accurately quantify performance out on the open road. And in part, it's been due to their creation of their first mountain bike wheels and research that led them to pursue speed gained from compliance of the wheel itself. Now it's led them to coin a phrase, total system efficiency. Now behind that, there's a very simple equation that comprises of the forces holding you back when you ride. So wind resistance, still chief among them, gravity, another, rolling resistance, the third, and then finally, vibration losses, which is where that compliance thing kicks in. Now, some of you at this point will probably be saying, well, hold on a sec, ability is the biggest thing holding me back, and you may well be right, but ability is more about the size of the engine pushing you forward as opposed to a force holding you back. So it is then that any new wheel set coming from Zips HQ in Indianapolis has its performance judged relative to these four criteria, with a particular emphasis being placed on a certain area over another, depending on the wheel set's intended application. So Zips 30 motor mountain bike wheel set, compliance is the key. 808, aerodynamics is the key. The 303 Firecrest is the all-round road endurance wheel set, all of them. This, the 353 NSW, all of them, but even better. NSW are Zip's premium line of wheels, so no expense has been spared in making these as good as they possibly can be. Not that you'd ever think that the Firecrest line is cutting corners, but here, they've been able to lavish an extra layer of detail on them to take that performance to the next level. Now we'll start with the rim. You can see it's got that classic hyper-node shape, which is that sort of wavy, bumpy profile that Zip first debuted on their 454 NSWs back in 2016. Now at the time, it made waves, and now I'm not sorry for that particular pun, for having taken inspiration, apparently, from whales, who supposedly have little bumps on their fins that allow the whale to be more agile than its size would suggest. Now I say supposedly, I'm no marine biologist, so I've taken Zip at their word and have duly been happily riding around on those wheels for the last four and a half years. 
On bikes, the idea behind those nodes is that they allow more air to pass through your wheels as you're riding along. So this reduces side forces in crosswinds and makes the wheels feel more stable as a result. Aerodynamically though, they still perform like a wheel whose depth is the deepest part of this wheel. So you get the speed, in theory, of an aero wheel, but the stability of a shallower wheel. Now that logic meant that Zip expanded the range up to an even deeper wheel, the 858, with 82 and 77 mil depth respectively. But until now, they hadn't got a shallower one. Now in part, it's probably because the 303 is already renowned as being a super stable wheel. But why have we got the 353 now? I guess you can never have too much stability, so that'd be one reason. But also, Zip have found that those hyper nodes can contribute to the strength of the wheel, which means they can then engineer a lighter rim as a result. That explains a significant part of the lightweight, in spite of the fact that the rim still has a 45 millimeter deep profile. I should say 45 mil, some of it's 40 mil. Obviously, there's a five mil difference between peak and trough. Now, the other factor, Zip say, is that this had hookless rim design, which is tech we first saw when Zip relaunched the 303S and the 303 Firecrest last year. Now, the difference between a hookless rim and a traditional rim is that the little hook that's on the inside of the sidewall of the rim that's traditionally been needed to securely hold a tire onto the rim when it's inflated has been removed. Now, I say used to be needed, and that's really important because thanks to tubeless technology, which has improved the tolerances of the bead diameters of the tire and also the rim, plus the bead technology itself, which prevents the bead of the tire from stretching when it's inflated, means that you don't need that hook any longer. But it does mean that you have to use these wheels with tubeless tires. Even if you stick an inner tube in, you have to have a tubeless tire. Now that's no hardship really. If you're after performance, you're probably already running super fast tubeless tires anyway, but it's worth mentioning, I think. Back to the rims. Removing those hooks allows the manufacturing process to also be improved. You could use a solid metal mold to form the rim bed now, as opposed to a soft silicon one, which gets squeezed out between the bead hooks. And what that solid metal mold gives you is improved and more consistent compaction of the carbon. So you can use less material, but get the same strength. Weight saving tastic. Removing that bead hook also improves the transition from rim to tire. So you can see there's just, there's just less of a jump, there's less of a gap between the carbon of the rim and the rubber of the tire. And that dramatically serves to improve the aerodynamics of the wheel set. And also actually, as a side note, aesthetically, it's really noticeable when you're riding and you look down at your front wheel, despite it being a really broad internal rim width, 25 mil, the wheel doesn't look like a fat carbon wheel. It looks really svelte. Despite being seriously light, these wheels have very much been designed for modern endurance riding, particularly with that 25 millimeter wide rim bed, which means that the minimum tire width you can use on these is 28 millimeters. Now that's not typical weight weenie territory, but then these are not typical weight weenie wheels. And it comes back to Zip's field research where they showed just how much faster wider tyres run at lower pressures are on anything less than pristine tarmac. So basically there's no point being a weight weenie if you rattle down the road on your rock hard 21mm wide tyres and hemorrhage a truckload of watts. This comes back to Zip's recommendation that many cyclists seriously rethink their tyre pressures. Now, I think a lot of you might be surprised if you input your details into Zip's tyre pressure calculator, which is freely available, by the way. I think you might be surprised by some of the numbers that it gives back, but these are numbers that are backed up by a ton of research. Now, moving inwards from the rim to the Cognition Hub set, which has also received a redesign. Cognition Hubs were first introduced on Zip's NSW line, and one of the big things about them was the reduced drag when coasting. This new version, they've actually improved that, so there's even less drag when coasting. They've also got faster pickup now on these and improved the durability as well. 
Right then, it's crunch time. Let's see if I can't harness some of the performance of this new wheel set to try and get myself a KOM. Something of a rarity these days, but I think I found the perfect climb for it. It's horrible, quite frankly, really steep. So ideal for super lightweight wheels, 18% average for nearly a kilometer. Uh, it's also incredibly loose and pretty rough for a road. So ideal for 28 mil tires, and I've got just 50 PSI in them as well. Now, the other thing that might go in my favor is such a horrible climb. Not all that many people have been up here before. So uh, hopefully, well, fingers crossed, I can do it. If nothing else, at least I've got some good morale with super lightweight wheels and a posh new bike. Despite the weather, which seems to have just taken the turn for the worst. To butcher a Greg LeMond quote, it never gets any easier, you just go faster. Okay, you ready for this? Results time. Oh yes! Yes, I got it! Ah, excellent, five minutes, 24 seconds, eight seconds quicker than the KOM and 24 seconds quicker than my personal best time. So, uh, oh, that is good, that is good. Now, you know, there is something very special about riding equipment and bikes that is just a bit better than you've ever had before. I remember that feeling when I saved up and bought a 500 pound mountain bike. I could not believe how good it was. And then when I got my next bike that was double that, I couldn't believe how good that was. And now even after all these years of being a pro and then working for GCM when I get to ride even better equipment, that feeling never leaves you. It's it's a special feeling and it's different to having a bike that you've loved for years and years that feels familiar and comfortable like an old pair of jeans but it is fantastic as i mentioned a moment ago zip have spent no expense in making these wheels as good as they possibly can be so for that reason they are more expensive than the firecrest which actually when the 303 firecrests were launched in 2020 had become significantly more affordable these though we're going to be retailing for four thousand dollars for the pair or three thousand six hundred euros or three thousand two hundred pounds so premium wheels then only you know if that is right for you but it's definitely worth noting again though that these are covered by Zip's comprehensive lifetime warranty and that's even including riding on gravel which is great then these wheels in lab tests are every bit as robust as the 303 Firecrest although again worth mentioning I think that there is a rider weight limit of 114 kilos or 250 pounds on these now riding a premium wheel set on gravel might seem like a scary thing to do but worth pointing out that that lifetime warranty it definitely adds a little bit of peace of mind and that's a good thing because I think the benefits of super light wheels are even more pronounced when riding off-road so you're typically doing steeper gradients up and down you have to accelerate and decelerate from slower speeds more often and also you tend to change direction more quickly as well so even though the effect of reduced inertia is minimal it's definitely noticeable now, do make sure you let us know what you think about the new 353 NSWs in the comment section down below. I can tell you for a fact there's going to be quite a fight at GCNHQ as to who gets to put these on their bike. For the record, I am tougher than I look, but, um, but the odds are probably stacked against me. Anyway, please give this video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it.